if you'll give me just a few minutes this morning, we, I want to say uh, just a couple things. Um, this morning we are going to get into our message, and, and uh, th- this is going to be an, an exciting year for us here at Life Church. We have, we have a lot of things that God is speaking to our hearts about, and uh, I, I'm a firm believer if you have an ear, let it hear what the Spirit is speaking to the church. And I really believe that God is speaking in volumes to the church. I believe that we are getting close to this, the end of this church age, and I believe that it is time for us to listen closely to what God is trying to tell us. Amen? Amen. And I, I think that, you know, I used to, my dad used to tell me when I wasn't listening very well, he'd say, get the wax out of your ears, son, and listen up. I'm going to tell you as a church, we need to get the wax out of our spiritual ears and listen up to what God is saying, because I believe he's wanting to speak. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask you, if you will, just to, to, to listen uh, for just a few minutes this morning. Give me that. I want to talk this morning about a time to reflect. And this season of, of as we come into New Year's and as we look at this, this is the last Sunday of 2019. Can you believe it? Is anybody else shocked at how fast this came around this year? Does it seem like it's going faster to anyone else than, than just me? I, I mean, I, I, can, I can think about all the seasons that have come up and, and everything that has ran together. And, and we were talking about planning some things. And my wife is already looking at, at our Valentine's party. And she's already got some things planned for next year. And I said, slow down. I'm not there yet. It's moving so quickly and things are happening. We're excited about some things that we're looking at in our building program. And we're just excited with what God is doing. I know God is working overtime and, uh, and we're excited with, with all that God is doing in our church and through our church as we reach out. But it, it, it's, it's hard for me to realize and come to grips with that the year of 2019 is almost gone. It just doesn't seem possible. Uh, For some, this was an opportunity to give thanks to the Lord because of the many blessings that you've received this year. How many of you know you're blessed this year? You've received blessings and you can you can stop just long enough to say thank you, Lord, for all the blessings. Um, This this year has brought uh, maybe this has been a year of milestones. Maybe you have met your goals and achieved and tasks that you've wanted to accomplish. Or perhaps maybe for for you today, this day, 2019 has been a year of struggles. It's been a year of battles. It's been a year of things that, that maybe ha- have not been so good. And you want to you wanna start 2020 because you want to start with a clean slate. And you want to start with a, a new work. Is my battery dying? You think it is. Or you just hear it in me in stereo. All right, we'll go with this one. Is this better? We wanted just to take just a few minutes, and, and, and I want you to realize that this, this beginning, this new beginning, that's what the new year is all about. For those who have been hurting, for those who have, ha, have struggled through 2019, you've limped along, all of a sudden you look and you see 2020 in your, in your sights, and you begin to say, there's a new horizon coming. There's a new day coming. There's a new adventure happening. There's something on the, the way that that God is about to do, that he's about to do something special. And so you're looking at this new beginning. It's been a tough year maybe for some, and, and, and you want to forget it. But moving on to it, we look back over this year, and we begin to think about all the blessings, and we think about all the good things. We think about the battles, and we look back over 2019. The sad thing is, is that you can't forget last year. Whether it was good or bad last year for you is something that is a part of your life. You may want to forget it, but you can't. You may want to put it behind you, but you have to learn from it. And for many times, we have to think about this past year of what it's meant to us. For those of you who want to continue your blessings of 2019 and you want to just carry it right on into 2020, there are some things that we realize that the challenges that will come, the circumstances that we might face in 2020 may be even greater than the ones we faced this year. Amen? We don't know what the new year has in store for us. We don't know the things, but I'm going to tell you something. We're speaking about the one, and we've been worshiping him all morning, that knows our future and knows what is coming our way. He is preparing our paths before us. Amen? God already knows what 2020 is going to bring and what's going to happen in 2020. And I'm going to tell you something this morning. One of the things that we need to do is hold on to his hand and look forward to the future in him. 
I like what Paul says best in Philippians, the third chapter, verses 13 and 14. He says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but the one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press towards the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And one of the things that I, I look at that scripture and it just resonates in my mind and begins to, to think about it as such a way is that Paul says, I have to forget last year. And for some, you may have to forget the fact that it was the best year you've ever had. For some, you may have to forget it because it's the worst year you've ever had. But you can't go through and live 2019 again. You have to take the next step. You have to turn the corner. You have to take the next day. You have to realize that I'm an old Chicago Cubs fan. I'm old, and I am a Chicago Cubs fan. With that being said, uh, we were all, our slogan for years was always, you just wait till next year. And the next year would come and we would say the same thing, you wait till next year. I can tell you this, whatever you're facing right now, know this, you wait till next year. My father has already promised the blessings to those who are obedient to him. The word of God has already spoken those volumes to us that God promised us to bless us and not curse us. The works of God and the blessings of God are before us. When we realize that we are to forget the past and move forward to it, we can realize that we can press towards the call of God in Christ Jesus that is on our lives today. I want us to take a look at ourselves today. I believe that when we look at this scripture found in James today, we can see that James was telling us that we need to stop before we go into this next year and begin to look at ourselves. Not only look forward to the next year, but look at ourselves in the mirror. I want us to take a look at ourselves spiritually. Have we grown this year? Has this year been a time when we have learned and we have taken on the learning path to be taught by Christ? James tells us a few things that we might need to see in that mirror when we look at it to make us effective for next year. I, I, I tried to find a guy that looked like me, but this was the closest I could get, so. James, the first chapter, starting in verse 22, he says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he, wa but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not forgetful, uh, forgetful here, but a doer of the word, and the doer of the work, his, this one will be blessed in what he does. Being a doer of the word is something that, that is, is, seems to be almost cliché to us. We realize and recognize the will and the work of God. But being a doer of the, the word of God simply means that we have been in the word and we are doing what it says that we are to do. Amen? There is not a question or a comment that we need to wonder, is it right or wrong? Should we do it? Should we not? If it's in the word, God means it, he spoke it, and now we need to obey it. It is, it, we, we don't need another list of, of thou shalt nots. The Bible speaks clearly of those things. We hold to the truths of this word. Our, our basis must be in the word. We, by do, being a doer of the word, number one, we need to have a reading program. For, for I'm sure that most of you, how many of you started last year saying, I'm going to read the Bible and read it all the way through every day? She, she, it's a lot of us, but how many of you know that by the end of the first week, we've already decided we're too far behind to continue? And that's why, that's why you listen to it on CD, right? Yeah. So, so, here, so many of us, we start off and we start beginning with the Word and we begin to, to read and we get into a reading program and the next thing you know, that reading program gets set off to the side. Amen. And we sometimes get into this. Uh, ne next, we realize that not only do we, we need a discipleship program. We have a discipleship program that we're working on in the church. People are t have been asking me for some time, Pastor, when are we going to do it? I've been telling them, when we get a bigger building. But, but we were sitting in the leadership meeting the other day, and 
You know, I, we, we have several nights of the week that we can use to choose. We don't have to do it on Wednesday night. We don't have to do it. God, we can do it on another night of the week. There's, there's seven days in a week, and we can choose that, and we can begin to. There's all kinds of opportunities, but we need to be a place where we create and develop and disciple people for the kingdom of God. That's what the church is about. We are a guiding station, a directing station in the church. We must realize that. If we are a doer of the word, we will be a disciple of Christ. Last, I believe that we need to memorize the word. And one of the things that we do in our 400 series that we teach is, is that we develop the, the idea of being able to memorize the word of God. The Bible says, hide the word in your heart that you would not sin against it. Amen. And so many of us as Christians have been Christians for a long time. And I've asked people, I said, what's your favorite scripture? And a lot of people can't even say their favorite scripture. And when we think about that, it's, it's not... It's not, I'm not saying you, you gotta, you, that's the only way to get to heaven. But it's important for you to know the word because the Bible says, know the word and the word will set you free. Yeah. Developing the word of God in your life to memorize it and to know it and to, to know it well. To be able to quote the scripture is the key that God wants for us to be doers of the word. How can you know what to do unless you know it well? Amen. Why do so many Christians, they, they, I was reading the other day in, in uh, one of the Christian magazines, it was talking about the statistics of, a, of the amount of believers that are falling away. That so many believers now are drifting away from church because the church has become stagnant. They said the church is just another money-grubbing organization. The church is all about this and all about, and I'm going to share this with you. He, hear me today. I wouldn't even, we wouldn't even have to take an offering Listen, and, and I'm about to, to say something. As a pastor, this could, could really turn out bad here. But you know this, if we didn't have to pay for these lights and the electricity and the chairs and the furniture and all the other things, it wouldn't be that big. But how many of you know that you, you pay bills? And, and, and all I'm saying is, is that don't worry about the church as far as that is. God said if we would just give him our heart, our money wouldn't be a problem. And for those who are struggling about giving to the church, one of the things that they struggle with is the fact that they, they hold on to it and it's become a source of a God in their life. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down and running over. The more that we give, the more, that we, the more generously that we give, the more blessed we become. You will never outgive God. Amen. When we look at memorizing the Word of God, though, it begins to be a source of our life. It becomes to be a way of life. It becomes something more than just a standard of something we read and, and gloss over. Uh, many of us are readers, and they like to read books, and, and there are many different books that are out there that are good. Some are good, some are bad. But we begin to, to look at those words, and we begin to read them, and we read all kinds of things. We hear all kinds of things. But we need to memorize and put the Word of God in our life on a regular basis so that it can affect our life regularly. When we begin to look at the, the way that we read the Bible, the Bible gives us this verse, and I like what it says in verse 24. It says this in the text that I read. It says, For he observes himself and goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. As long as I'm standing there in the mirror and looking at myself, I can see every fault and flaw. That's why I never stop long enough to look in the mirror. Jose, it's much easier for me to say I'm a good-looking dude if I never look at the mirror and know what anybody else is looking at. Take that counsel well. So I'm just <laughs> You can look at it and you can say, you know, I, I, I look good. I've got long, flowing hair. When I look in the mirror, I say, what happened to my long flowing hair? I, I begin to realize and recognize that, that I, but, but so many times we can look at the mirror, we can see our faults and flaws, and we, then we walk away from the mirror and we forget who we really were. We forget what we look like. Come on. When... When I saw a picture of Pastor Barman and I from last year, and we had our red shirts on with our Christmas ties on, and I looked at that and I said, how can anybody call us twins? 
I mean, I'm taller than he is, for goodness sakes. And, and all the things that, that, that affect us to, to be, be looking at that. And we, we see this in, in the different standards of the way we are, but we're so quickly to forget. Here's what I'm going to share, share with you about this past year. You need to understand that you need to look back on 2019 with this understanding. It was God who led you step by step. It was God who brought you through your dip. Come on. It was God who brought you step by step. It was God who changed your life. It is God who's working to bring out a new you. It is God who's creating in you a new work, and God is doing a new thing in your life. And though you may have gone through it in 2019, the effectiveness of this change can carry on the rest of your life. When we begin to look at the, the works of God and the hand of God, we cannot quickly forget where we came from or what God has done. And oftentimes when we, we, we commit these things, how many times have we started to make a commitment and we quickly forget it? How many of you will say this year, I am going to quit I'm going, well, let's do, it the, let's do it the way that society says it. How many of you are going to say this year, I'm going to lose weight? How many of you said that last year? How many of you said that the year before? How many of you are still going? We can go back years and years and years and years. And we quickly forget those comments that we make of, I'm going to do this. We may have made a quick comment to, to say, I'm going to read the Bible more. I'm going to pray more. I'm going to be at church more. I'm going to, to tithe more. I'm going to, to give more generously. I'm going to do all these things. And we begin to make the comments and the, 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 the statements to God saying, Lord, I, I'll do this. Because when we make a vow, when we make a commitment, we don't make it just to ourselves. We make it to God. The Bible tells us in a couple of these scriptures, go ahead and pull that up, Alejandro. It says, when we make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you have vowed, better not to have vowed than to vow and not pay. Ecclesiastes 5, 4 and 5. It says, have you kept your promises to the Lord? If a man makes a vow to the Lord or swears an oath to bind himself by some agreement, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. Hold on to that right there for just a second. Because here's what happens is so many times, and, and we're quick to pray, we're quick to say, Lord, if you'll do this for me, I'll do this for you. And we make a bartering system with God. God, if you'll get me through all my problems, if you'll heal all my diseases, if you'll, if you'll give me the solutions to all these things, God. Come on. It goes on and on and on. I've heard it said many. I've had more than one person, several, not in this, of course, nobody in this congregation today has ever said this to me. So please don't look at somebody and say, I was you, wasn't it? But I've had people say, Pastor, I'd be glad to give if God would just let me win the lottery. Pastor, I, we would have that new church if, if, if God would just let me win the lottery. I never will forget the time, Joe, when I was praying for a man that came in my office and he had his lottery ticket and he said, Father, and I knew I was going to be confused right there. He said, Father, would you pray over my lottery ticket? He said, if I win, I will bless this church. I will help you build this new building. And he brought that to me, and he, he said, pray over that. And so I just kind of looked at him, and he was very sincere. So I took that ticket, and I put my hands on his hands, and I began to pray. And I looked, and, and you know, when you're, when you're praying a prayer like this, sometimes you open your eye and look out of the corner of it. I'm praying, and I said, oh, God, let this gentleman that stands before me know that if he has robbed you with his tithe and offering, that you will hold him accountable. But, God, if he has been faithful in all of his ways to give to you completely and totally, then, God, bless him accordingly. And I looked out of the corner of my eye, and one of those spiritual, and this guy's mouth was hanging open. He was going, He began to shake his head, Phil, because he was concerned. He was thinking, oh, my goodness, 
This guy's crazy. I said, but God, if he's been faithful to you, bless him accordingly. Listen, it, it, you, you have no worries to ask God for anything if you've been faithful to what you've said you were going to do. Amen? I'm just, I'm just putting that out there. Look at these next few statements. I pulled these up. It says, what about you? Were you sick? And you said, God, if you will heal me, I will straighten up and serve you. What about the job? I, I'll, give you, I'll give more if you give me the job, Lord. What about the marriage, Lord? If you bless my marriage, I'll honor you. I'll bring my kids to church, and I'll be faithful to it. I'll be a godly example. What about the promises you made when you saw no way out, and God gave you that way? What about your family and the promises you made to be faithful to them? I think about those statements, and I read those, and I, I begin to, to look at that and the volumes of what it speaks to us about our faithfulness, our committedness to what we say. Lord, if I ask you of anything this year, I look back upon it and say, God, if you would answer those prayers, I don't require you. And God, I know that your willingness to answer my prayers, you know my needs before I ask him is what the scripture tells us. But God says you must ask and believe that you would receive. When we come to God, we believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who, who diligently seek Him. We realize and recognize the effort that it takes when we come to God. We realize through the memorization and work of the Scripture that's alive in our hearts and our minds that the promises of God are for us. And God is not against us. He is not looking to make us fail, but He's looking to bless us and bring us to His glory and His purpose be fulfilled in our lives. When I make a vow to God, I need to keep it. I need to keep it. If I said I would do it, God, if I ask you, you are faithful. And Heavenly Father, I will be obedient to you as best I can. The second thing we realize is, is that when we are a doer of the word, we are blessed. There is no doubt that by being a doer of the word, we become a blessed individual. You cannot learn, you cannot have the, the scripture in your life and be a doer of the word and not be blessed. Amen. Being a doer of the word simply means the fact that when we obey the word, God says he would bless us. In verse 25, he says, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. I thought about that. Now, does being blessed mean that you have all the money in the world? No. Does it mean that you are without sickness or without a problem? No. Being blessed is the relationship that I have with him. That no matter what this world brings against me, the Bible says, if God be for me, who can be against me? The passage of scripture that comes to my mind is the standard that God speaks to us. That no matter what this world has to come against us, I know that I'm blessed because I know him. Amen. And when I know him, I can face anything or any circumstances. When we look at this, we realize and recognize the work of God and the help and the hand of God will get us through any and every circumstance that I face. And though 2020, I look at that and I begin to face that, that front and I, begin, I looked at it and I said, Lord, I, only you know what's coming. Only you know what my future holds. I had somebody tell me the other day, I said, Pastor, will you give me a word for my future? I said, hide yourself in the word of God. Pray every day and seek his face and you'll see him in your life. More prevalent than you've ever seen him. But what people want me to say and people want me to hear is that, that God is going to, you're going to, you're going to have a, live a life and this next year is going to be perfect without faults and flaws. And I will not tell you that because I know in, in all things, I am more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens me. And that no matter what the circumstance that the enemy brings, God will bless the work that I do. Look what the scripture, it goes ahead and, and spelling out that scripture, it says, He looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it. He is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. 
and he is a doer of the work. He begins to apply his hands. The Bible says that when we put our hands to the plow, not to look back, not being faithful to a denomination or a work or a building or a place or even a people. Our duty and our work is to be doers of the word of God and do his work and his will. Whatever we look to, we must be the work and the lay the hands and the effort to God's work. What God has set before us, we do it with all of our might. Laying ourselves to look to 2020 as a year to say, God, here I am, use me. Making a difference for the kingdom of God. I don't have to stand behind a pulpit. I don't have to teach a Sunday school class. I don't have to be in charge of anything. All I have to do is be a doer of the word and God will bless that that I do. When I become a doer of the word, things look different. Being a doer of the word, I can look at 2020 and begin to realize that it creates and challenges me to make spiritual challenges for ourselves in 2020. Have you challenged yourself? Have you looked in the mirror at that guy that you look at every day? I, I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you that I, what I really wanted to do, and I told my wife last night about 11 o'clock, Joe, I said, Hun, I wish that you could go to the dollar store right now and buy everybody in church a mirror. Because right now I would like you to just take, take a mirror and look at yourself. And I want you to look within yourself. And I want you to begin to say, go ahead and pull that next one up. One more time. Make spiritual challenges for yourself. I want you to look at yourself spiritually in the mirror. And I want you to say, Lord, I want to learn. I want to, I want to challenge myself. Here, here's what... My brother-in-law, when we, he took my discipleship course and we, lived, we were pastoring in Indiana, he said, Greg, I was never very good in school. I couldn't do very much, and I, I'm not a very good one to memorize. And I said, but to graduate from the 400 class, you have to memorize this scripture, Randy. You have to put it in. You have to begin to study it, and you have to work on it. And he would work on it, and he would work on it. And when it came down to the, the time when he was to quote it to me, he said, I just can't do it. And for two years, he said, I couldn't do it. But when I got ready to, to, to do it for the last time, he quoted that scripture and he said, I've got it now. Let me share this with you. Don't put a goal before yourself spiritually that you know you can meet. Stretch yourself. Stretch yourself. Look at the goals that you've set for yourself this year. Reading the Bible, not just reading the Bible, but memorizing the Bible. Memorizing the Bible, become a user of the word. Begin to become a doer of the word. Become to, to step involved in new ministry. Step involved in new opportunities. Step in new ways and new things. Challenge yourself to grow this year more than you've ever grown before. Amen? Because I can look and I sit with my mirror and I can look and when I look at that mirror I see me but I also see the things that are behind me. I, I love it when people take these selfies and they put it on Facebook and, and it's really kind of comical because when they stand in front of a mirror and they take their picture they're forgetting that there are things behind them. Think about that next time you post that you clean your bathroom before you post that picture of you in the bathroom. Anyways, just saying to those who that becomes effective too. But you need to realize that when you look at that and you're taking that and you're seeing yourself, those things, what did you do last year that caused you to grow? Can you look at yourself this year in the mirror and say, I, I accomplished more spiritually than I ever have in my life. I read more of the Bible. I've got more scripture memorized. I led more people to Christ. I did more to develop others. I, I, I stepped into a new ministry. I stepped into a new role in the church. I, I stepped into new places. Is that you? Can you look in that mirror and say, that's me? And then from that picture, can I look forward to saying, 2020, Lord, I am looking forward to new things, new places and new ways that I can serve you for the kingdom of God and your work. When I come to that place, I must look at that and say, 2020 is a new opportunity for me to do more for you. 
Secondly, we realize we must set goals that are kingdom-oriented. Setting goals that are kingdom-oriented and driven for that. Don't seek a goal that lays up treasures for yourself. Don't try to accumulate these things. There's nothing wrong with having earthly wealth, but when earthly wealth becomes our driving force, we will never have enough. To the wealthy, it's oftentimes said that how much is enough, and they will always say one dollar more. It is never to the place to where we can be satisfied if we are driven by our accomplishments or the accolades of others. We must set our goals to be oriented to kingdom work. When we look at our spiritual man in the mirror, we must look at it and say, it is not about me, but about him being glorified in me. The things that I do and the work that I lay my hands to, God be glorified in me. Thirdly, we realize that we become a doer of the word and not just a hearer of the word. We live what this scripture says. We do what it says that we are to do. And if it doesn't say it, then we don't do it. A few months ago, I shared with you of a time when I had ran into one of my kids and they were busy asking me about things. They were curious about things and they asked me, is this wrong? Is this wrong? Is this wrong? And I told them, I said, well, what does the Bible say? Well, I don't see it in the Bible. It doesn't say thou shalt not do that. And I said, but the fact that you're asking me means that God is already telling you not to. You're just asking me if it's okay and I give you my approval. You see, there is the truth that is right there. If God said it, I believe it. Amen. I don't have to bend it, twist it, or try to adjust it. I live by it because that's the standard that God set before me. The Bible says, be holy because he is holy. Be righteous because he is righteous. Live righteously. You don't have to worry about it. I don't have to stand up here and tell you thou shalt not. Come on. Is this too short to wear? Is this too long to wear? Is this offensive? Can I do this? Is this habit okay? Is this wrong? I'm going to tell you something. If you're asking me, I'm going to tell you right now, if you've got to think if it's right or wrong, it's probably wrong for you. I know I'm supposed to preach a nice little fluffy message that doesn't offend anyone today. But the work of the Holy Spirit cuts. The Bible says this cuts like a, a sword to the very marrow of our spirit, and it should. And when we look at this, it should line up, and we, we shouldn't have to ask. We should just know because that's what the Word of God says. Go ahead and pull this last scripture up. So I was praying this week. Hold on, don't, don't bring it up all yet. We were, I was praying about this next year for the church, next year for me, next year for what I believe is our, our goal for this congregation and for our church. God brought me to a simple little word, just a small little word, Dave, that, that God gave me, grow. I thought, well, Lord, that's so simple. That's such a simple idea. God said, it's so simple that nobody does it. It's so simple, but you need to instruct them that they need to grow. Growing should never stop in a believer's life. It should never stop in our spiritual man. Now, I can tell you, I stopped growing and going up when I was in eighth grade. Now I've gone this way, but I've... Got I stopped going this way. But you know what? As a spiritual man, a spiritual woman, a, a spiritual individual, who, whoever we are, we can, I can tell you this. You never should stop growing spiritually. God brought me to this scripture. It's found in Ephesians, the fourth chapter. These are the scriptures, and I want you to read this, and I'd like you to, to put this in your hearts. This is the scripture that you're to quote for the 400 series of discipleship, so you can start practicing, and when we do our discipleship class of the 400 series, you'll know ahead. This is what the scripture is. You're to memorize this scripture. It says, and he himself gave some to be apostles, and some to be prophets, and some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. And for the equipping of the saints and for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. 
till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Go ahead and pull that next one. There it is. And that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love, that we may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, and from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of, every, uh, of the body for the edifying of itself in love. I thought about that. That's a lot of scripture to memorize. That's a lot. Brother Farr, I, I, I'm going to pick on you for just a minute. I love this man. Sharp mind. Sharp mind. I threw it out there the first time he took my 400 series. And I said, who's got this? This man didn't hesitate, but quoted it almost verbatim. He missed a couple places, but almost verbatim, you got it all right. And I will tell you this, you can sit here and say, I can't do that, or you can choose to say, I can. My Bible tells me that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My Bible tells me that I can work at it and I can do it. And you may have to work at it. Come on. Listen, I can tell you this. When I was in college and I struggled with reading and when I was in high school, I, I, I struggled and I found out as I entered into the college years that they, I had dyslexia and they said that's part of the reason that you've been struggling with your reading for so long. I learned one thing, that I have to work harder at it and I have to work hard on the process of it. But once I do it, I achieve it, I'm looking at it saying, this is fun. But I had to learn some things. I had to work at it. You may have to write it down. Memorize one scripture at a time. Come on, amen? amen? How many of you will say this to me right now? I can memorize that scripture. Come on, amen? The, the amens are getting much weaker right now. I can see that. There will not be a test. I will not ask you before church is over. But I will tell you this. Set a goal. Set a spiritual goal. I look at that and I say, Lord... That's who I want to be. I want to grow spiritually this year. I want to be able to see that. Because if you can learn that scripture, there's nothing that you can't do. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you put your mind to it and apply yourself, 2020 can be the best spiritual year you've ever had. I want to grow spiritually more than I've ever grown. Brother Farr, how long have you been saved? Lou, how long have you been saved? Oh, you just had to beat him, didn't you? <laughs> just had to beat him. You're not as old as he is. You've just been at it longer. So I can tell you that here, here's, here, I'm, I'm pointing them out as for this reason, as this. I challenge you to grow more spiritually this year than you've ever grown. I challenge our youth, and I begin to look at you guys, and I, and I think, man, you guys have got so much. You know what? All I could think about was partying and playing when I was a teenager. I wanted to have fun, and that's it. But I challenge you. I challenge our youth. I challenge each one of us this year as we go into 2020. Let's look at it and say, look at that man in the mirror and say, are you growing this year? Are your, is your spiritual man growing? the kingdom of God if not what am I going to do about it what am I going to do about it I want you to stand with me all across this place amen amen Roberto or Dave Faith you guys come as you stand this morning I'm going to ask you just to bow your heads for just a few seconds Heavenly Father, as we stand before you, our heads bowed, our eyes closed. We look within ourselves. You said that we must look and search out in ourselves. 
See if there's anything in me, God, I lay it down right now. If there are things in my life that I must spiritually adjust before I can grow, then God, I, I ask you to help me do so. I pray right now, God, for every head that is bowed and eyes closed, every, every person under the sound of my voice, God, right now, that they are prepared in themselves to meet you, that they have made the decision to accept Jesus Christ. They have surrendered their life because there's no way to grow and go forward in you spiritually until we surrender our life completely to you. Everything about your word tells us that you came, that you died, and that you rose again. And because you live, we live also. And today, right now, the first thing we can do in this process of growth is to surrender our lives totally and completely to you. Heavenly Father, right now, I surrender my life to you. I'm going to ask you to pray that prayer with me right now. Each one, if you'll say it right out loud, just join me and let's say it together. Heavenly Father, I surrender my life to you. I give you my whole life and everything that's in it. In Jesus' name, amen. As I pray that prayer, Heavenly Father, you heard us pray. You saw our hearts. This is a challenge, God, that we make. The spiritual challenge to grow. The spiritual challenge to change. Heavenly Father, I don't want to be the same. I don't want to look back next year at 2020. And should you tarry, Lord, and should you give us this hope of an opportunity of 2021, God, I, I know this, that I don't want to look back on this year and regret anything. God, there are times when I regret from 2019 that I missed opportunities that were before me because I was too tired. I missed opportunities because, God, I was too busy. And Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me of those times. I ask you, God, across this congregation for us to be big enough and, and to be faithful enough to you to realize that, God, we, we need to ask you to forgive us of those things that we have neglected and missed. Heavenly Father, right now, I see that man in the mirror every day. And when I look at him, God, I want to say, God, I have been true to this challenge. I have been true to this, God. I've made the effort to grow in you. I thank you, Heavenly Father, right now for the new man that I see. Right now. Heavenly Father, across this place, you see every heart and every mind. You see us each the way we are. You know us better than we know ourselves. God, you stand with us right now in this very auditorium. You stand in the very midst of us, knowing everything and the guilt that we may stand before you with. But your arms are open wide to love us, to direct us and guide us. One last thing that I want to say to each of us that I want us to say it to Christ. Lord, don't let me be the same this time next year. Help me to change so that I can be faithful to you. Help me to be a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. Help me to be faithful so that I can wave the banner of your blessings to each that I meet. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Would you just do this with me real quick? Reach over, take someone by the hand. I, I want us to do this as a congregation. Heavenly Father, this spiritual challenge that we place before us, I encourage us to take this theme to grow. Grow, just the simple word grow. And I want you to hold on, that hand that you're holding right now, would you just apply this prayer to it and say, God, would you help this individual who I hold? I may not know them well, but God, would you help them grow? Would you help them grow this year? Let them desire to grow. Let the Spirit of the Lord move mightily in their life. 
let the sun shine upon the, the brokenness of their life. Let the, let the words, let the Holy Spirit rain down upon the, the, the spiritual dry places and let the power of God begin to burst forth and let growth come again. God, let us grow. I ask it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. This morning, would you take just a few minutes before you leave, hug somebody's neck, tell them you love them in the Lord. Listen, if you eat fast enough, you can come back with us at 2 o'clock and be part of the Marshallese service. Amen. God bless you.